Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be changing our player health system. We're going to be breaking it out of the player movement. We're going to be putting on to its own object as a child of the player. And we're going to be putting the hurt box with that object. Our player health is going to work very similar to how it has before, but it's going to now derive from a generic health system that can be used on any um, object or thing in the scene, including even, you know, pots or bricks or leaves. So let's uh, jump right in. Getting right into it, what we're going to be doing today is starting to rework the health system so that it's more generic and can apply to more than just the player. And we'll talk about how to rework it for the enemies as well. First, what I want to do is in my scripts folder, I'm going to create a new uh, folder inside of there because I want to keep things nice and organized. And I'm going to call this folder reusable components. And these components that we're making are reusable in many senses since we're using C Sharp and we're using Unity. These are components that you can use directly in any other game where you might need to have a health system and a damage system. So we're going to make these as generic as possible. And then once we have them, the generic part all lined out, we're going to go back through and we're going to flesh it out so that it's unique to, say, the player or unique to, say, the enemy. So um, we're going to open up this reusable components. Uh, we're going to create a new C Sharp script inside of there. And I'm going to call this generic health. Yeah, generic health is fine. And I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. So taking a look here, we have nothing right now. If we look over at our player movement, the way player movement works is we have our um, our current health and our player health signal. And then when we take knockback uh, down here, we uh, reduce the runtime value by some damage which is passed into the knockback and then we raise the signal. And if it's greater than zero, then we raise the player hit signal and start the coroutine. Uh, whereas if it's I don't think we need to do this player hit anymore since we changed the way that we do camera shake, but no, we can address that in a moment. And then start the coroutine. Otherwise, we just set the player inactive. And that's essentially what we've been doing for game overs. Now, the way that we're going to run this is we're going to have a reference to a float value for what the max health for this thing is, whether it be the player or um, an enemy or, or whatever. And then we're going to have a float value for or sorry, a reference to that um, in our, our script and then also a current value that we're, we're keeping track of. So what I want to do here is make a reference to that max health. So we're going to say public float value max health. And then we want to know the current health. So public, actually, instead of making this public, we're going to make this Again, following that open-close principle, this doesn't need to be changed by anything else. So to make sure it isn't changed by anything else, rather than making it public, we're going to make it a serialized field. So serialized field, private, and we're going to, this is a float that we're going to call current health. Now, serialized field means that it can be edited in the inspector, but it's still closed to anything else. This is essentially similar to creating a constructor so that it can be read from other things uh, but be closed to, to modification, which is the, the O in solid design, the open-close principle. All right, so in our start method here, what we want to do is say that our current health is equal to max health dot runtime value, which is the value that we're currently using. Now, uh, we don't need to have the update method, but I'm going to leave it there for right now because I don't think I need to get rid of it. Uh, we're going to have a few different methods that we're going to line out that could be used for anything that has a health system. So the first method is going to be, uh, we'll call this a public void heal. And this does need to be public because it needs to be open for other things to access. And this is going to need to know an amount that it's going to heal. And so this is going to be 
since we're using a float for our current health, we're going to need to use a float for the amount that we're healing. So this is going to be a float, um, and we'll call it amount to heal. And this is going to uh, take the current health and add an amount to heal. Now that amount to heal could take it above the max health. So we're going to say if current health is greater than max health dot runtime value, which is that max health that we currently have for it, then we're going to say that our current health is equal to the max health dot runtime value. Oops. Sometimes I can trust um, IntelliSense, and sometimes I hit that enter key just a fraction too late. Okay, so that's a generic heal, and this can work for the player. So let's say that the player goes over a heart, or maybe there's a heal spell, anything like that, and it's it's pretty flexible and it's really really generic. Now. What I want to do next is create a full heal. And so this could be, I don't know, you could have all kinds of reasons that you might want to use this. So this is going to have a public void full heal. And again, this doesn't need to have an amount to heal because what this is going to do is take whatever the current health is and set it equal to directly the max health dot runtime value. All right, now we're going to do these two methods, but in reverse, one for damage and one for um, an instant kill. So this is going to be a public void damage, and this is going to take in a float amount to damage. And we're going to say our current health minus equals amount to damage and we're going to say if current health so rather than making sure that we're not going above the maximum we want to make sure we're not going below zero so if current health is less than or equal to zero well actually you can just do less than zero then current health is equal to zero all right so there's our damage and now after we do the damage, um, the last thing I want to do is maybe there's something that would cause an instant death. And so this is going to be a public void instant death. This doesn't require any float because all it's going to do is take the current health and directly set it equal to zero. All right. So this is pretty generic. This we need to have a float value that we're using as our max health and we have a current health value now in the start method we're going to set our current health equal to whatever the max health runtime value is now since i want to use some inheritance on this i'm going to take these voids for heal full heal damage and instant death and i'm going to make them virtual so that i can override them in any child class i might make so this is going to be a public virtual void. Uh, same thing for the full heal. Virtual. The damage. And the reason that I know that I'm going to need to override this is, for example, um, the player script, or the player's health system, is going to do everything that's in here, but it's also going to then raise the, the flag to tell the, the UI to update itself. Alright, I'm going to save this. Now, this alone isn't going to be enough. We need to make a companion script to this to do damage. So, back over into Unity here. It's going to, there we go. I'm going to create a new C Sharp script and I'm going to call this generic damage. And then we're going to open that up into Visual Studio. And generic damage is going to need a few arguments as well. It's going to need to know uh, how much damage to do, which is going to need to be a float since I'm basing my player's health on a float value. And it's also going to need to know a tag to which it will damage. So for example, if this is something I would attach to an enemy object, the tag would be player and it would damage the player. 
if this is something that's on the player, the tag would be enemy or, um, I don't know, enemy or destructible or something like that. So what I'm going to do is, since these need to be changed in the inspector, but they don't need to be open for anything else to change, this is going to be a serialized field. Again, that open closed principle. This is going to be a private float. Uh, it would help if I could spell damage. And we're going to do the same thing with the tag that we're going to do damage to. So serialize field, private string, and we'll call this other tag, since I like using other with the uh, uh, trigger collider. Now this itself has to be on an object that has a trigger collider on it. So I can either make sure that I always do that, or I can require a component by using a specific attribute in Unity. And how this attribute works is before the class, you would add require component, and then you have to tell it what type. And so it's type of, and the type that we're going to require is a collider 2D, which is the parent class for all the 2D colliders. So if it's a circle collider 2D, a polygon collider 2D, uh, edge collider, any of those fall under a collider 2D. Now I don't, I don't believe we need the start of the update method, so I'm just going to get rid of those right now. What we do need is the on trigger enter 2D. So uh, public void on trigger enter 2D. And again, I'm going to change this from collision to other because it just makes more sense to me that way. Uh, what we want to do is check to make sure that the other is what we actually want to do damage to. So if uh, other dot game object. Now somebody had brought to my attention that you don't need to do the dot game object. If you just do other dot compare tag, it works just fine. I like doing the game object because it kind of makes sure that your mind is in this rigid sense where other in this case refers just to the collider 2D, not the game object it's attached to. So we want to take the collider, grab the game object it's attached to, uh, and then compare that tag. And the tag that we want to compare is going to be our other tag. Now, when we're doing damage, we want to make sure that we're doing damage to the hurt box on the other thing, which is going to have a uh, trigger collider on it. So it's not just that we're comparing an other, are comparing to other tag. We also want to make sure that other dot is trigger. And then when we do that, we are then going to look for the health um, object that's on there. And that health object, since we have a generic one, if we make a child of it, the child's, the children objects can always uh, go in for the parent objects. That's the Liskov principle that we talked about in the last video. So we're going to say, um, we're going to make a generic health, and I'm going to call this health, or let's call it temp, is equal to other dot get component. And the component we want to get is generic health. And now we want to make sure that there's actually a health thing there. So if temp, meaning if that temp object exists, if it's not an, an empty object, then we're going to do temp dot damage. And the amount of damage we're going to give is the damage from this object. All right, there we go. So we've got our generic damage and we've got our generic health. Now we're going to need to um, go through the health a bit more here. We don't need any of these using tags, so we can get rid of them. Another thing somebody had asked is if you have using tags that you're not actually using, uh, what does that do? It's a tiny, tiny bit of performance, but every little bit of performance does matter. So you always want to make sure when you're towards the end of a project that you're going through and removing any using tags that don't need to be there. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is go through my player movement and because I'm going to do my health system through something else, I'm going to remove that current health system that I have. So I've got this to-do health. Rather than just deleting it, I'm going to comment out sections that use it. And to comment out a section, I don't know if we've talked about this or not, you start by doing a backslash and then an asterisk, and that begins the section you're commenting out. 
to end the section you're commenting out, you want to catch the asterisk and then end with another backslash. And then it just comments out anything in between those. All right, now, so I've got those, and by commenting those out, you can see over here we've got a little bit of red. So if we jump down to where that red is, we can see that we broke our, our knock routine, our knock method. So let's look at what the knock method does. It takes in a time and an amount of damage, does the damage, raises the health signal, makes sure that the health is greater than zero. If it is, then it starts the knock coroutine. If it's not, then it just makes this object inactive. So I'm going to comment out this section again. It would help if I could get the asterisk correctly. There we go. Um, and then instead, I'm just going to directly call that coroutine, the knockback coroutine. So I'm going to grab that line right here. I'm going to cut it out, and I'll put it at the very beginning. Just paste it right there. All right, cool. So back into Unity now. Now, one of the things that I never really liked about the way that I set this up was the player has two different box colliders that are both right on the direct player object. That never really rubbed me right, um, but it's the way I've seen other people do it. It's just, it doesn't seem right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a health manager object that is a child of the player. So it's gonna go everywhere the player goes. And its job is to hold the trigger collider. Its job is to have the same tag as the player. And it also has the, um, the player's health component on it. So underneath, actually I need to do this in this prefab menu here. So the reason I'm doing it in here is to make sure that everything gets saved. So I'm going to create an empty. I'm going to call this uh, player health. This is going to get the, for now it's going to get the generic health component. I'm going to come back and tailor this a bit more to the player in just a moment, but we want to get that health component on there. And then also I'm going to take this box collider 2D. So I'm going to uh, click on this little gear icon next to the one that's the trigger. Make sure it's the trigger one. I'm going to copy the component. I'm going to go back to the player health object and click on that gear icon. It doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to copy component as new. And it'll copy that component through to the health object. Then I can just remove this other box collider 2D so that now our main player only has the one collider on them, but you can see the hurt box still exists. I need to make sure that player health has the same tag because that's what our damage is based on. All right, cool. So it looks like that has everything set up for the most part. Um, what I'm gonna do is I just wanna make sure that this is gonna work before I tailor it more for the player. So I'm going to go to my player health. My max player health is going to be, maybe, there we go. Um, for my scriptable objects, I'm gonna to go to my player stuff and I'm just gonna grab player health and put that right there. Uh, what is player health right now? Six, all right, cool. Now, I'm going to create an object that's just going to exist to do damage, and yeah, I might as well. Okay, so I'm going to go to my art, and I'm just I'm just making something random here. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just going to make it be this square. So I'm going to pull this square into the scene, and this is just so that I can test out that the damage is working. Didn't I just pull that square into the scene? Square? Where? Oh, it's trying to, that's why. It's trying to replace the tile map for some reason. All right, cool. So I'm gonna put this down here and it needs to have a higher sword layer so we can see it. And I'm gonna call this damage test. Now, because I put that require component on the script that we're using for generic damage. So if I go to my reusable components, generic damage, and pull that on, adding component failed requires some kind of collider 2D. So 
I can't even add it to something without having the right component on it. I'm going to use a uh, box collider 2D. And now I can add my generic damage component here. I'm going to say that this is going to do one. And then the other tag is going to be player. And let's make sure that the, yep, that's good. All right, so what I want to do is I want to watch the player's current health. So there we go. OK, if I hit play, it should set the current health to be equal to the max health right away. Do, do, do. There we go. So our current health is 6. Now, my damage test here, I'm going to go over to my scene view so I can move stuff around. My damage test, uh, let's actually lock the player health so that I, I'm forced to see it. Uh, boop, locked. All right, so my damage test. If I take this, so you can see that it's doing damage to our player. Um, this isn't set to be a trigger, so it's only accessing when it's, oh no, it is a trigger. I did it right, okay. So it's kind of pushing the player around too, but, um, oh, because I, I locked this. So no, I did not set the damage test to be a trigger. There we go. So the reason it was pushing the player around is because it, uh, yeah, it wasn't working right. Okay. So if I hit play, this should go back to six. Do, do, do. My computer is very slow today. All right, there we go. Back to the scene. Got that locked. Damage test. Meow. Meow, 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 meow. Okay. And it should also not be able to go below zero. Cool. All right, now what I want to do is tailor this a bit more for the player to make sure that it's working the way that it should with displaying things to the, um, to the scene. So in my player scripts, I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a new script that I'm going to call player health. Then I'm going to open that up into Visual Studio. OK, looks like it, for some reason, didn't open the script that I wanted it to open. OK, maybe I need to restart my computer. Yeah, there we go. All right, so player hit. I called it player hit? What is wrong with me? Oh, I opened player hit. What the heck? All right, I want to open player health. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that weirdness. I'm probably not going to cut that out. <laughs> you guys can just suffer through it. Um, so rather than inheriting from a mono behavior, this is going to inherit from generic health. And this is going to require uh, a signal as well. So serialize fields, private signal health signal. And then uh, what I want to do is I'm going to override the methods for um, taking damage that we just made. So for our health, uh, let's see, I had heal. I don't need to worry about heal and full heal just yet. Right now I want to do the damage. So I'm going to take that damage and I'm going to make an override void. So this is going to be a public override void damage, which takes a float amount to damage. And I'm going to do the base, which is base dot amount to damage. And then after that, I'm going to raise that signal. So health signal dot raise, meaning that it's going to tell the, um, the UI to work the way that we would expect it to. So back over into Unity here. I'm going to grab my player health object. I'm going to remove the generic health script as soon as this is done thinking. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I'll remove that component and, oh, it doesn't like that because I'm editing the player and I'm not in the prefab thing. There we go. So here, player health, I'm going to remove the generic health component and then I'm going to replace it with the player health component. Max health is from scriptable objects, player stuff, player health. Yep, there we go. And then the health signal is in signals, health signal. There we go. So if I go back, hopefully this is going to work the way I want it to. We won't have knockback from this because we're not actually accessing the knockback. Okay. Cool. So why is that not working? Okay, so that's the issue. Uh, one of the things I forgot about is we're changing the player's health in here, this uh, variable that's on this object. But when we send out the health signal, the heart containers checks the uh, float value that we have in memory. And the reason that we're doing that is to avoid using the singleton pattern. So what we have to do then is in our player health script, after we do uh, base dot damage, amount to damage, before we raise the signal, we want to do um, whatever the runtime value is for our health. We want to set that equal to the current health. And we're going to do this for the player, but we're not going to be doing this for any enemies that might use this script. This is another reason why we want this script to be kind of off on its own. So if we look at generic health, I need to remember what I named those things. Uh, max health and current health. So I'm going to say max health dot runtime value is equal to current health. Um, is that not what I called it? Oh, yeah, it's because this is private. So this does need to be public then. And this can get rid of the serialized field. Okay, cool. So uh, if I go back into Unity here, I'm gonna let that think for just a second. Make sure I don't have any errors and we should be fine. <laughs> okay, so hitting play. Okay. All right, so you can see now that our health system is working uh, the way that it should. Now, we would still need to go through and make sure that anything that's supposed to damage the player has the um, generic damage on it and that its tag is set to damage the player. So for example, the enemies. However, I think that this pattern of making it so that our player health is for one, separate from our player movement, and for two, on its own object, which is where that other box collider is. I think having those two box colliders has been a bit confusing for some people and caused a few issues where there probably shouldn't have been. Um, however, the mistakes that I made making this, which I'm 100% willing to admit to making, I am not perfect, <laughs> um, are mistakes that I think are relatively common for people who are uh, new to Unity or new to development in general. Um, you tend to want to just put all the components on like one thing and then that makes it so that when you want to break off a little piece of functionality from that one thing, it can be a bit more complicated. So there we go. Um, we've reworked our player health system and we also reworked our damage too. We've separated damage from knockback. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. Tons of really cool people there chatting every day. Um, I have a Patreon. As little as a dollar a month will help you out. There's some exclusive videos over on my Patreon, including a video about pushable boxes, um, transparency effects, 2D lighting, uh, all kinds of good stuff. So go ahead and check that out. You don't have to by any means. I'm still going to be making content for YouTube, but it's a way that you can get something and help me out just a little bit to make these videos. Otherwise, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.